Hello everyone, I have some crazy content coming, so buckle up. The background, I lived with a group of people who I thought were my friends. They were two couples, and we all lived in the same house for almost two years until I recently moved out. There was David and Tina and Brittany and AJ. I was the only single person there. There was debate on how we should pay the bills, but we all decided to give the money to the person whose name was on the bill. David paid the mortgage, Tina paid the water and electric slash gas, and I paid the internet. It came to the point to where I was paying close to 80% of the mortgage by myself, the entire water bill, about 75% of the gas and electric, and I was paying the internet bill by myself. I was giving the money still to the person in charge of the bill, but came to find out about 10 days before I moved out that the mortgage was defaulted on and the house was in foreclosure. Also, the water, gas, and electric bills were in constant threat of being shut off, and that the only up-to-date bill was the internet. While they all saw me struggle to pay these off, they were mindlessly spending money during the day, which is when I sleep due to working third shift, so I never saw the mindless things they spent money on, nor did I ever see the mail since they grabbed it before I woke up. Brittany never paid anything as she was having her check garnished due to unpaid student loans, but she always had expensive makeup. AJ never held a job for more than two weeks. David and Tina were always calling into work, knowing that I wouldn't allow them to go without a home due to our history. One day, I woke up while they were all out and about doing something or other, so I went to go check the mail as I was expecting a package, when I saw the bills in the mail, so I decided to investigate. I opened up the gas and electric bill, as they are by the same company, to see a total amount of almost $400 and in risk of being shut off. I was shocked and pissed. I knew right then and there what was going on. And I vowed to screw them over as hard as I could. The revenge, I had just interviewed for a new job that paid almost double what I was making, and I knew that I interviewed well with them. I told myself that if I got the job, I would give them a 30-day notice and move out. As it was close to the end of the month and I had already paid them, I would be moving out before the 1st of February. I got the call with the job offer the next day, which I happily accepted. I did the paperwork for the background check and it all came back clean. The same day I accepted the offer, I typed out a 30-day notice and recorded myself, with my phone in my breast pocket, handing it to them, explaining that I was moving out. I started my job and my hunt for an apartment close to my new job, which I found within a week of starting. I took almost the entirety of my checks, set them aside for rent, deposit and basic things that I would need. I was asked several times to help with the next month's bills, to which I said no, as I was saving for my own place. They also had plenty of time to come up with the money between the four of them, because I was doing it all by myself pretty much on a meager pay rate of $11 an hour before my new job. There were a lot of scowls, passive-aggressive behavior, and flat-out attempts to take or use my things or foods without permission. The day came when I finally went and got my U-Haul and had a few friends help me move. Free beer and free lunch are the best payment ever, as they shared it all with me. I was determined to get it all in one go, so I got the biggest one they had, and we got everything packed up. I took everything that was mine down to my pizza stone, which they loved, my expensive kitchen knives which they would use and never clean, even my toilet paper that I had bought three days prior because I needed it. A few rolls went missing very quick. After moving everything, I sat down on my couch, looked around, my cat in my lap, and breathed a sigh of relief. I happened to be good friends with my previous neighbors. We smoked each other out frequently. And asked them to keep an eye out for anything out of the ordinary. Four days go by and I come to find out that the gas, electric, and water have all been turned off and they were asking to fill up some buckets to manually flush the toilets, bathe in, etc. Now, both couples have dogs, which my cat hated as they were both hyperactive as hell, but I loved them. So I decided that those dogs were in a dangerous situation as they had no water, no heat in the middle of winter, and probably no food as I had bought the last bag about two weeks prior, I hate to see an animal hungry, so I called the local humane society and left an anonymous tip about the dogs and how I was worried about them. The next day, my neighbor, Todd, texted me telling me that the dogs were removed from the home, that my previous housemates were being charged with neglect, and because of the lack of utilities, that these were not civil, but criminal charges. This was enough for me to smile, but I wanted more. I knew that David was divorced and had a child. 
I also knew that he wasn't paying child support. I then contacted the local courts and made them aware of the flagrant non-support, and that maybe they could help the agency looking for him. I provided the address that we lived at, and that the homeowner was the one who that was being looked for. From there, it came to light that he was almost $25,000 behind, which is a felony in the state where I live. He is now living with someone on their couch, as Tina left him, the house has been foreclosed on, and he has nothing to his name while facing multiple criminal charges. Moral of the story, don't take advantage of a friend who knows all your dirty secrets. After my wife and I got married last year we decided that we should both get on the same phone plan. We went down to the AT&T store and met with a rep who told us we'd both be on an unlimited plan for $70 per month all in, including taxes and fees. I was very specific about getting the all-in price for the service. It seemed like a decent deal, so we signed up. Two days later I log into the website and see that there's already a bill for $139. I call up a rep to see what's up and they tell me that between the activation fees, taxes, and surcharges, the bill was correct. I told them what the salesperson told me and they basically told me to pound sand. I promptly told them I wanted to cancel the service and wanted the $139 waived. They said they could cancel the service but could slash would not waive the bill. They also told me if I cancelled immediately my wife and I would lose our phone numbers, which is true. So I figure since I already have to pay for the month, and I don't want to lose my phone number I will just get a new carrier and cancel when I'm ready. So I do my research and find visible, which is excellent, and we make the switch. I call back to AT&T and inform them that we have switched carriers and want to cancel the service. I again ask for a refund. The rep informs me that since I have had the service for 4 days that I am not entitled to a refund. He tells me to read the fine print on the contract, which indeed tells me that I have 3 days to cancel for a full refund. I'm now fuming because the first CSR that I talked to on day 2 denied me a refund if I cancelled. I ask for the next level of CSR and they send me to a customer care and retention person. I explain the entire fiasco to him, and how I feel that I have now been lied to twice by AT&T reps, sales rep and first CSR. He is a really cool guy and apologizes and says he'll take care of it and will completely waive the bill. I am very thankful and hang up thinking that this is finally resolved. Fast forward a month and I get an AT&T bill in the mail saying my payment was not received and is now late. I again pick up the phone and call AT&T. I eventually make my way through two CSR reps until I get back to the customer care and retention department. This time I did not have the chill dude, instead, I got a very smarmy woman who said that the bill was due and I'd owe the entire amount. I asked her to please check the CSR notes and that the last guy told me he would waive the amount. She put me on a 10 minute silent hold and came back and said she'd escalate the matter to her supervisor. She said I should receive an email by the end of the week with a resolution. Two weeks go by, no response. I call again. This time I get a very nice lady that is sympathetic. She says she'll waive the bill. She comes back and tells me that she can't do anything because the bill has already been sent to collections. She said not to worry and that she'll send a letter to collections to have them waive the debt. I ask if this will go on my credit report and she says no, and that they'll take care of it. Six months later I get a letter in the mail from Sequium Asset Solutions out of Georgia trying to collect on the $139. I immediately send them a letter via certified mail demanding that they verify the debt, since it's obviously bad. I hear nothing for two months, and then I get an alert that I have a negative mark on my credit. I go in and sure enough Sequium has indicated that the amount is in collections. I immediately write letters to all three bureaus requesting that they remove the remark. A month goes by and every single one of the bureaus removes the mark, thank God. Another three months go by and then I get a letter from Sunrise Credit Services in NY again trying to collect on the debt. This is truly unbelievable because it appears that Sequium couldn't verify it, so instead of apologizing and waiving the debt, they just sold it off to another collection agency. I send another certified letter to Sunrise demanding verification. I get nothing in reply. So far they have not attempted to put a mark on my credit. That's where this part of the story ends. Who knows what will happen next? I could file a lawsuit but the filing fee alone would be more than the amount owed. Here's the thing, I am not cash strapped. I am blessed enough that I could easily pay the $139 without making a dent in my budget. I have lost 5x that amount in hours spent on the 
phone and writing letters. But I am determined to go to the mat with AT&T on principle alone. This brings us to the revenge stage. You see, in addition to my day job as an attorney, I am an elected city councilman in my town, and when I was going over our monthly expenses I noticed that we were paying AT&T close to $6,000 a month for our phones, internet, and TV services. We're a fairly small town so it was pretty obvious that we were being bent over by these clowns and that we could save a ton of money by switching. I started working with our city manager and IT director on finding other solutions. We discovered that by switching to various carriers and providers that we could save half. I never would have looked that closely into our telecom expense had AT&T not jerked me around. Two weeks ago the resolution to switch was put on our meeting agenda and the council voted to pass it. We decided to completely cut ties with AT&T. Our city is saving a ton of money, getting better service, and with the money we saved from switching we were able to hire another part-time animal shelter employee which we desperately needed. I highly doubt our city would have considered switching if I didn't make such a stink about it. AT&T will end up losing hundreds of thousands over the coming years because of this. I hope it was worth it AT&T. Here is some backstory for you. Several years ago my mom was dating this nice man with two kids. My younger brother and I liked the boyfriend himself, but his kids were another story. His kids were entitled jerks that always got what they wanted, constantly stole our toys and were generally a nuisance to be around. I always tried to be a better person, but my brother and I were constantly getting into arguments with them due to their pettiness. They weren't even the worst part of the relationship, the boyfriend's ex-wife was. From my perspective, I felt that she was the type of person that if she couldn't have him, nobody could. She made my mother's and our lives hell, constantly filing false complaints about our side of the family generally pointed at my brother and I from harassment to claiming I had stolen the son's toys, which was the other way around, and going after the boyfriend claiming he was an unfit parent. Several times she'd try and ruin any plans we had come up with. For example, after spending months planning a trip to New York, last minute she blew a fuse and demanded we cancel the trip so that she could take her own trip with them. We had already gotten written agreement from her. One time she even demanded the older son and I visit a family therapist, after pointing all the blame on me I told my side of the story. It resulted, without the therapist fully implying, that they agreed I was in the right and them storming out of the room. Among many other reasons, even after my mom and her boyfriend had gotten engaged, the ex-wife was one of the biggest reasons why mom had decided to call off the engagement. The harassment and drama were just too much for us. It broke her heart to do so, but she made us the priority and got us out of that situation. A few years after the breakup, my small family and I were living happily. I never saw the kids or the dude again. My mom had still kept in touch with the former boyfriend, but after some time apart she seen the faults in him too. I was in the 8th grade and living life happily. That was until the ex-wife stepped into gym class one day. Apparently, since the breakup, she had gotten her teaching degree and became a substitute teacher. She was now replacing our normal gym teacher who was on maternity leave as well as acting as the assistant teacher for our health slash sex ed class. Basically I now had to see her pretty much every other day for the rest of the school year. At first, she didn't recognize me. Puberty had hit me hard, changing my appearance drastically especially for someone who hadn't seen me in like 5 years. Eventually, she recognized my name and that's when the harassment began anew. All of it was snide remarks about my appearance. Constantly pointing me out as an example as to what puberty can negatively do to you, pimples, facial hair, voice cracking that sort of stuff, to the class as if I was the only one dealing with it. The main health teacher. Didn't know about it either. Basically everyone in the 8th grade was taking sex ed at the same time. It was technically one extremely large class but split up into male and female groups, and wasn't I lucky that the ex-wife got the male half, mine. I told my mom about it immediately and she was livid. She sent multiple emails to the school requesting that they switch teachers or at least let me take the class online. It all fell on deaf ears until with the help of the ex-boyfriend, we showed them dozens of emails, phone calls, and messages all spouting harassment at my family and I this resulted in her being fired from the school and basically being blacklisted from our school district and the surrounding area. If she wanted another teaching job she would have to find it elsewhere. This resulted in a major legal battle between her and the ex-boyfriend because she had tried to move out of state with the kids without his nor the court's permission. 
apparently she lost custody of the kids and had to go back to her old job, don't know what it was. All in all, it was an interesting experience. We cut all ties with that entire family after the whole ordeal and went on with our lives. I'm now a sophomore in college waiting out the lockdown in my state. While my mom still hasn't had a long-term relationship since then, mostly sticking to online dating. But she's happier than she's been in a long time. What did you think? What would you have done differently? Share your opinions in the comments. And if you enjoyed the stories, slap that like and subscribe button for more of them, and don't forget to support the original writers with an upvote, links are in the description. Peace out, and catch you tomorrow.